pre stuff to see. We're going to zip through this at the beginning. So I'm just kind of stay on you, mute as people join on. And if you haven't already, I really encourage you to open your chat box function. Um, noticing some familiar faces on the call and utilizing that already. So if you haven't utilized Zoom with us before, having that chat, bo chat box open is a really great opportunity to connect with people during this time as well. Hi, I just wanted to say I'm joining for um, W Schools Foundation because they are having a Spring for Schools meeting, and I'm Christy Mint here. I'm an executive assistant, so I won't have a lot to say, but I'm going to be taking notes to take back to Sue and the foundation. Excellent, Christine. Thanks for joining. Um, feel free to take a peek at some of the slides that are circling through right now, and we'll be starting here in about two minutes. Actually, for those that are on, if you want to, I'll be talking about this as we get started, but in the chat box, I invite you to uh, please include your name, the community or organization with which you're affiliated, and your email address. We wanna make sure that we're staying connected and sending information out to folks afterwards. If you want to opt out, there'll be an option to do that as well that I'll chat about in just a minute. Okay, it's 10 o'clock. Welcome everybody. Thanks for joining. Um, for those who I don't know, my name is Stephanie Charrington. I'm the Executive Director of the Backbone at Eastside Pathways. Um, the purpose of these calls is really for us to connect as community stakeholders in response to COVID-19 so that we are making those connections, not duplicating the really critical direct services that are necessary, especially for those most in need at this point. Um, I mentioned this just a couple of minutes ago, but if you just joined, please, I invite you to um, share your name, the community or organization, organization with which you're affiliated, and uh, your email address into the chat box. Um, if you are not familiar with where the chat box is, there's a ribbon if you move your cursor. There's a ribbon at the bottom and there's a little icon there that says chat. You can open up chat there um, and include your email address. If you want to opt out of sharing that information because your contact information will be shared, because one of the main purposes of this convening, virtual convening, is so that we can connect, um, connect with each other visually, so I invite you to share your video, but also connect outside of this convening. So getting the um, email addresses so that you all can connect with each other is really important. If you want to opt out, I invite you to um, send a private message to Peyton Richardson, and you can do that in the chat box. Um, you'll see when you're sending your message, Right now, the default is to everybody. There's a little arrow pointing down. If you click that arrow, you'll see everybody's name listed, and you can go right to Peyton Richardson and let him know if you want to opt out. Okay, I'm going to give my little signal to my team here to do the slide change. Vicki, if you don't mind, thank you. So just a very, very quick uh, overview. 
about Eastside Pathways. For those that are not familiar with Eastside Pathways, because this is open to all stakeholders in the community, Eastside Pathways is a partnership, first and foremost, of cross-sector um, stakeholders working together to change the way we work together so that we get better outcomes for kids from cradle to career. That partnership is staffed, if you will, by what's called a backbone. And that's what I'm a part of. Our purpose is solely to convene and facilitate those partners coming together to work together more effectively. We have um, a great team of folks who help with that in our backbone staff. Let me introduce those uh, folks to you. So on our team, we have, um, and if you'll raise, uh, wave your hand, so Kalika Curry and Sandy Nathan are both our community impact managers. They facilitate a lot of these convenings. Peyton Richardson, Peyton, wave your hand, is uh, our data officer. And Vicki Yu is our business and operations manager. She's running things behind the scene here. Not present today is um, our communications manager, and that's Joe Trotty. So we'll switch here. Uh, thank you. So just a few quick meeting logistics. These are drop-in meetings. So um, we just want to do a quick overview of how these actually work. So as you know that these, there's been a new shelter in place order. Um, and so these kinds of convenings are even more important. Again, I invite you to please share your video. Uh, I understand there's, it's not always the appropriate time to do that or various other reasons why, but it is really, really meaningful to make connections visually with people. So if possible, please um, share your video. And note that if you have some issues with your connectivity, the video can reduce that um, connection. So if you're getting any warbling in your voice, you can stop sharing your video and that will help. Also, everybody's gonna be muted uh, automatically. Um, however, if and when you are ready to speak, you can simply unmute yourself. On that slide there, you'll see at the bottom is a copy of the ribbon that you'll see on your screen. Just simply click that microphone and that will unmute yourself. Really, really important in this work is that we have the opportunity again to connect with each other. And though we will be providing a summary, the recording of this video, a summary of the notes and summary of what goes into the chat, it's really, really important for you all to make note of the important topics and points that are coming up for you and note people's names that you want to connect with. Because again, the real action and movement in this work happens when you guys are connecting outside of these calls. Um, use the chat box to share any resources or ask questions. Of course, take care of your needs. And as I mentioned, these uh, recordings, this meeting will be recorded and then provided in the follow-up communication that will go out. Okay, next. Oh, there we go, we, we got the pop-up. Uh, what you can expect in this call and in general on the Tuesday and Thursday calls is that there'll be a broad group discussion that will be facilitated. We'll have time for breakout discussions um, via the magic of Zoom. After the breakout discussions, everybody will um, be deciding when Peyton comes up here in a minute, which breakout discussion you wanna participate in and you'll be magically transported into that. And of course, uh, this is the opportunity to do real-time sharing and offerings of services and resources in the community. And the purpose, of course, is to reduce the duplication or gaps so that we are more effectively and impactfully and quickly offering services and action to those in need. And of course, we wanna strengthen our relationships. So with that, I'm gonna turn it over to Peyton so he can take us through some of the data. Thank you, Stephanie. Um, and it's great to see new faces and uh, faces we've seen last week um, on the call. Thank you for all the work that you're doing. Um, I just wanna briefly touch on some of the data that we've collected from you all um, as we begin to figure out what our response is and um, kind of craft the narrative around what the community needs and how we as a partnership 
and community are expanding and kind of being nimble in this, you know, very rapidly changing atmosphere. So along this, the bottom axis here, you'll see some of the areas that you all have lifted up um, when answering either the survey or through um, some of the chat that we have received over the past couple meetings. Um, and these are gonna be on our website, so I'm not gonna dwell on these too long. I know we have some really substantive work to do. I just wanted to let you know that we are uh, taking this feedback um, seriously. And here we have our sector representation um, from the first, from the previous two calls. And I think we see some new folks on the call today. So hopefully these uh, colors can expand and uh, get even more diverse. I'm very excited to, to update this as well. Um, and again, this, sits on our website just a little bit of an infographic as to you know as we start to create this narrative of what it is that we're actually trying to do here um, and uh, the work that we have done and I'm really excited to hear uh, the report outs and the just all of the work that um, the work and the connections that we're continuing to make um, again these graphics will that I'm showing here I'm not going to dwell on them but they do exist on the Eastside Pathways website um, so, and we will be updating them a couple times a week just with general information on what is um, taking place on these calls and, you know, who has been a part of it. So, one, when we talk about kind of creating the story arc, one of the things that we want to let everyone know, this is, you know, a busy time and we're trying to be as nimble as possible, but we are, you know, on the leading edge um, of some of the collective impact communities within the United States. Um, you know, within our Strive Together network, there are three other communities here that are um, documenting their work. There may be others that are, that are doing it, but these three are, are documenting some of the work that they're doing, and Eastside Pathways is, you know, continuing to, you know, try and lead that charge with a wide breadth of um, topics and making sure that resources can get to the community, and we're trying to be as nimble and maximally inclusive as possible, so we are really uh, kind of, you know, pushing forward in the efforts to help the community. So, uh, and you can see here some other partnerships are doing incredible work as well. But that's just really to drive home the fact that we are trying hard and this is going to be iterative and messy, but it's work that needs to be done. And, I, you know, we're all proud that we are uh, in this together. And finally, um, as we move into the uh, the later part of the call, we're going to have the breakout sessions. Um, and so here are the seven breakout sessions. I know last time we didn't leave enough time, so I want to allow everyone to look at these and choose only one and, you know, within the chat box, please type a number. Um, I'm going to move on from this slide, but this little box of uh, numbers and topics will appear in subsequent slides. So if you're curious, um, so I want to make sure that, sorry, I'm getting some internet connectivity issues. If you are curious, we will continue to have those, uh, those choices for you in the, uh, in the subsequent slides. And again, please choose one. And I am going to now move on and hand it to Kalika, who's going to lead us into our gracious space. Thanks, Peyton. Um, hello, everyone. If I haven't met you before, my name is Kalika Curry. Uh, as Stephanie mentioned, I'm a Community Impact Manager and Facilitator for Eastside Pathways. Um, so just shifting us from that technical work into the adaptive work where we can start to think about how do we work together differently. Um, and I know as folks were joining in, we started to really talk about um, how this uh, new announcement last night is really shifting things for us and the decisions that are having to be made and how we're thinking about developing solutions moving forward. Um, so just lifting up as much of the news today is about what is not possible, it's critical for us to focus on what is possible so that we can continue to show up and do the work. So my question for each of you, and I um, encourage you again to use that chat box function, um, you can also unmute your mic and share vocally if you'd like. Um, my question to you all is, what are you holding as your flashlight? What are you using to kind of illuminate uh, the path or kind of what is the point on the horizon that you're looking at uh, during this time? Any bright spots, people that you're keeping in mind? I 
Thank you, Helena. Oh, you're saying that you're your existing partner. Thank you. Nice, some shout outs for some new folks on the call. Thank you, Helena. We've been appreciating all the communications you've been sending out. They're very helpful. It's nice to have facts when we're trying to move through these times. I'm gonna invite maybe just one or two people who are willing to unmute and, and share, just in case we have folks who aren't able to see that chat box. Make sure we get some voices in here. Hello, my name is Laura with Bellevue LiveSpring. Um, and I think at this point, my flashlight and my point on the horizon is the fact that at the end of this all, we know we're going to be okay. We're gonna be just fine. Thank you. One or two more folks want to jump in? This is Sue Ba. I, uh, I'm looking forward to this all being over so that I can travel and see my family. Mm -hmm. And I don't know if I answered the question properly, but that's I what think I'm, that's great. That's Thank you. Looking. That's where I'm going with this. Yeah, <laughs> I absolutely. Want it done. I have to share yesterday I, uh, or the other day I FaceTimed my dad and he was so awkward that he had to show me his fish because he felt so uncomfortable being on the camera. So <laughs> strange times. All right, well, I'm gonna move us on to our next slide. Thank you so much for sharing, everybody for chiming in, um, really wanting us to continue to hold that theme of focusing on the horizon. Um, I'm just giving folks a couple of minutes to share some progress reports. Um, either if you're new to this call and you've got some momentum in your role or your organization or community, or for folks who have been joining these calls to take some time to share up, um, share out any progress that's been made as a result of these calls, connections that you were making. We know at the last call during those breakout sessions, there was some really rich work and collaboration that was being designed. Um, so just wanting to continue to create that space for people to share that traction. Um, so we can keep this theme of positivity um, and forward thinking. Um, and also I want to note that at the bottom right hand uh, corner of the slide, if you haven't already, there's those uh, options for breakout sessions. Oh, Putter, I think you're on mute. I can unmute you. There you go. Awesome. Oh. Uh, I'm trying to unmute you too, and it's not working. Let's see here. You want me to say something while, or do a oh. little report while you're waiting for oh, better? There she goes. She's unmuted. Okay. There you go. go Thank you. It. Butter, did you still have something? Oh, there you go. We hear you now. <laughs> but I, but I, it's my computer says I'm muted. Oh, well, you're, you're unmuted. <laughs> I know. So I don't... Oh, now you're muted. Oops, there you go. <laughs> Technology. <laughs> you're mute. Okay, Sue, did you want to go while Putter works out her technology? Yeah, I'll just say a few words. Um, at the last meeting, the breakout session was the financial breakout session, and Judy, uh, Judy and Judy from Hope Link and uh, Treehouse 
were in that meeting and one of the big problems was uh, unemployment for youth and, and young adults. And actually, they have done some work. They've made some connections during the off time um, with a number of people. And so that's actually moving forward. And I spoke with, uh, I also spoke with Nancy Curry of the Bellevue Chamber and Patrick. Patrick and I exchanged emails uh, with the Bellevue Downtown Association with the idea that perhaps business could get involved too with this. But anyway, so they've made, this, this group has made some progress and uh, I think we'll be talking about it again. I, I think it's still under, I assume it's still under financial assistance, but uh, anyway, that's job for youth and uh, young adults if anyone else is interested in this topic. Thanks, Sue. I want to um, invite Judy to, uh, to chime in and uh, add to that. Yeah, thanks, Sue. You did a great job giving a summary of our progress here, and I want to give just one example. So at Hope Link, we don't operate a youth program. However, we're connected to the regional work, so work source system, and my employment services manager knew who the youth employment person is at WorkSource, um, the one who's designated for that, and we were able to connect that person, Julie Shore, directly to Judy Y at Treehouse, and that really got some things moving along. So it's... Uh, an example of the value of taking time to be on a call like this, and even though you may not be in the, uh, the, the center of the topic, your connections could have great value for someone there. So that's it for me, thanks. Thank you. Any uh, folks from the uh, food or child care breakout sessions that want to uplift any connections or work that's happened between um, last Thursday and today? This is Lindsay Robinson from HopeLink. Um, we're really excited. We have created um, some things we were talking about last week. And one is an infographic for a DIY food box that people could create for their neighbors to share out. So excited to provide that empowerment tool. And I do have a new flyer to share out also with our locations and distribution hours. Awesome. That's thank, thank you for that. Um, just want to lift up for folks that you can utilize the chat box to drop files. I think I see a couple folks have already done that, but if you have other tools or resources you'd like to share, um, you can use that chat box function to do that as well. Okay, any other updates as it relates to childcare or food? All right, awesome. So I'm um, getting an update here that we still have uh, 10 more folks that need to uh, vote to uh, jump into one of those breakout sessions. So if you haven't done so already, please do select one of the options. You'll note them in that green box in the corner of our slide there. Okay, I'm gonna move us on. We're making lightning speed here. So um, based upon the input that we've been getting in our Google Docs slide, we've uh, uplifted some um, reoccurrent themes. Um, and today we really want to take some time to talk about wages and employment, especially knowing um, with a lot of the work that's been happening um, to put people on uh, furlough, as well as unfortunately having to let some people go. I think it's a really um, urgent topic for a lot of folks. Um, also wanting to provide space to talk about remote learning options, um, different resources that are being provided, and any other emergent or urgent topic. So we've got about um, 10 minutes here, and I'm just going to put myself on mute and encourage other folks to unmute themselves and share any resources, uh, topics, or themes as it relates to wages and employment or remote learning options.
Hi, this is Kathy. Um, uh, I'll just lift up one issue that Alma Gonzalez from MISO programs, Palmer Torres and I were speaking of just on a phone call earlier, is a lot of people in the community um, uh, have questions about whether they can continue working because the guidelines from the governor just aren't specific enough. Um, and so those are a lot of the questions um, that we're hearing, specifically from the Latino, that Alma's hearing from the Latino community. Yeah, Alma, do you want to jump on and speak to that? Can you hear me? I don't know how to work this. Yep. Thing. You're good. We can hear you. <laughs> okay. So, yes, I have um, proposals from people from my team. And would they be here in the community yesterday? Because uh, many of them, they have a uh, different kind of more like independent work, like landscaping houses or things like that and they wasn't sure if that will stay on the essential like uh they can keep working or not and i was reading on the governor's page but it's very confusing i don't know where to go to figure it out uh whether or not some of the independent contractors can work um can their their job can consider essentials or not because the real concern for the community is uh what if they go to work and the police will stop them? And many of them, they cannot afford the interaction with the police. You know, that, um, because either way, they're already on um, a way to the immigration process, some of that situation. So uh, in order to protect the community in those, in those kind of situations, um, I was looking for a place where we can get more information about what is, permit, what is permitted, what is not, so we can pass it out the right information. Thank you, Alma. So I'm kind of hearing, um, wanting some really clear and concise information to share with folks about um, their safety and understanding what is uh, the practices and procedures. I know Helena um, is on the call and has some really great tools uh, from the city about um, what's considered uh, what's being allowed to be open and whatnot. So Helena, do you want to speak to that? Yeah, so um, had a meeting this morning following up the governor's uh, stay at home order. Uh, we are trying to determine uh, exactly when that goes into effect. We're in the process of, of uh, at the city determining um, uh, when that will be exactly effective. We don't know if it's tonight or tomorrow. Uh, we're trying to find that out, but uh, getting back to Alma's piece, one of the things that uh, we have been doing is looking at um, uh, what is the role time period and how are they interacting. I have been told that they have now supposed to be stopping um, uh, arrest, uh, deportation, arrest, uh, activities and focusing on criminal activities, but I don't know if that's absolutely true, but I will ask that question of the EOC to find out more. I have been taking information out of this group and sending it to the EOC. Uh, the EOC is the Emergency Operations Center for the city, uh, and they are the ones that are coordinating all the true factual information that's out there and I can ask them a question and they usually get back to me as to uh, what the current status is. So um, uh, these notes are really important because it's hard to remember everything that people are saying and asking for. I'm also trying to gather as much information as possible. Um, I was on a call yesterday with 188 different organizations across the county um, and there was a wide variety of things that uh, they talked about from food. And what I just put on the chat box was information on financial links to financial information and unemployment, um, even to the point that uh, I think the state is allowing employers to uh, have temporary workers uh, uh, be temporarily laid off so they can get unemployment benefits during this time. Uh, so there's a lot of information out there from grants to small business loans, from um, 
a lot of information, but getting back to Alma's point, um, there is going to come a point where there is going to be only essential people only allowed to be uh, going back and forth to work, but that means a lot of different things, right? So food service workers are essential. Uh, health providers are essential. Uh, there's a lot of uh, folks that we take for granted are really essential. So people who uh, do a lot of, for us, uh, maintaining buildings and cleaning buildings, there's a lot of stuff out there. So Alma, if you will phrase your question in a written format in a couple of different ways, that really helps me to take back exactly what you're asking and see if I can get some information for you, okay? Thank you, Helena. Um, I wanna encourage folks as we continue to think about in the breakout sessions, <clears throat> potential solutions, that we are thinking about the different uh, dimensions of diversity that folks are experiencing and being mindful of that because accessing resources looks different for a lot of different folks. Um, so just wanting us to continue to hold that theme when we get into the breakout sessions to think about the solutions that we're developing. Um, another resource I'd like to lift up um, as it relates to that. Oh, yeah, go, Helena. There's, there, I know there's a raise your hand button on here, but I can't find that it. That works for me. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so I was at a homeless populations meeting yesterday as well, and the question came up about not only translations, and we're working on that as well, but how to communicate to uh, groups that do not have internet access. And so I know for the homeless population, and we're going to be trying to apply this, uh, we're going to be making hard copies, getting it out to all of our partners who do outreach regularly. Uh, but there's a series of places that uh, also just like churches and uh, faith groups and um, grocery stores, uh, so if you have a list, and um, again, I'm looking to you and I'm looking to anybody else, if you have a list of places that uh, you think really information can get to the community, uh, especially those that do not have internet services, send me that as well, please, so that I can get it out to the proper people so that we can get communications going that way. Thank you. Hi, good morning. Can I jump in here real quick? Uh, hey. My name. Yeah, my name is James Nelson. I'm Community Relations Program Manager with PCC uh, Community Markets. Uh, could you touch a little bit further on what would be distributed in those grocery stores to reach those folks uh, and what would it look like and when would it need to be distributed to those grocery stores? Because we might be able to assist with that. Thank you, James. Sure. I think what we're trying to do right now, James, and thank you so much, um, is that Right now, we're just trying to put flyers up and put flyers up in different languages. Uh, so the things that are uh, going out in um, on our website, there are some that are just straight flyers. Like I appreciated uh, Hope Link's flyer today about where all the food banks are. Uh, uh, so those that's probably what we're looking at is just flyers at this point um but if there is a better mechanism that pcc prefers uh to be able to get communications out to folks uh let us know and we can try to shape toward that i will pass that information on to our communications team thank you okay that sounds great what would be the best way for me to uh follow up with you on this I will send you my email address. Okay, perfect. Thank you. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you all. Thank you for modeling that. So again, um, really encouraging folks to utilize that chat box. It's a great way to connect. Um, and I love seeing that some commitments are being made and we're getting some traction. Um, another thing I want to lift up out of what I just heard you say, Helena, was making sure we're considering that um, a lot of these tools and resources that are being developed are online and making considerations for folks who don't have that technology at home. Um, I also saw in the chat box, I think Laura, uh, you had a question. Do you want to uh, speak to that? Um, I also see Lynn, you had a question or some comments.
if you're talking about Lynn Robinson from the city of Bellevue, uh, since we have two Lynn Robinson or L Robinson, yes. um, L Robinson from Hope Link, <laughs> I saw there's a comment, but uh, from city of Bellevue, you're welcome to chime in as well. <laughs> well, I just um, really appreciate the people who are on this call and PCC for joining in. It's just so heartening to see everybody working together to to help out. It's it's huge. Thank you. Yep, absolutely. Yeah. Okay. Um, for uh, let's see here, Lynn from Hope Link. I see some. Um, talking points here around um, the essential functions, to have a badge or a document to connect them to that essential function. Can you speak more to that, please, for the group? Yeah, I'd be very happy to. Um, so, and Judy sent out the list, it looks like, of the essential critical functions. Um, and so our food banks are considered a critical function or essential. And the recommendation from the Department of Ag on the I was on this morning was that um, that people have some kind of badge or document that connects them with the agency that clearly shows that they are connected with it just just as people are going about their business and in case there's any interaction with um, law enforcement so that was their recommendation thank you um, Alma did you catch that I feel like that's a good talk cool awesome great thank you um, and then Laura, um, can I ask you, uh, you asked about uh, are currently our community assistance involvement is limited due to our office closure. When we receive assistance requests that we do not support or cannot at this time refer clients elsewhere, is there a phone list circulating that we can add to our list of organizations that refer to clients? Do you want to speak a little bit more to that? Uh, yeah, sure. Um, so basically at this time, we when we are in our offices, we have like this a three page list um, that shows us different resources in the area, whether it's here on the east side or on the west side, that allows us to refer people out that we are not able to assist at that point in time. Um, and I feel like there may be more than, than what we're giving and maybe our list is just not updated or um, some of these places are just not specific to the area. Um, we get assistance requests from Seattle, we get a, you know, um, requests from here on the east side, Bellevue, Issaquah, Renton, um, and our organization, we strictly stick to Bellevue. Um, and we definitely don't wanna turn people away, which we don't. Uh, we give them the contacts that we do have. And I, I would like to think that it's enough, um, but something tells me that there might be more. And I'm more than happy to share what we have in comparison, um, to what everyone else might be using. Um, phone numbers also may need to be updated. Maybe there's a new extension that happened. Maybe with um, this whole shelter in place ordeal that's gone on, people have changed their voicemail and people are just not aware. Um, maybe people have called before and are used to a certain prompt and now it's different and, and or new extensions have been made in place. Um, and I, I know it's tough to, to make these lists because I'm pretty sure there are a ton of places, whether here locally or nationally. Mm -hmm. um, it would just be nice, I guess, to make sure that bases are covered. Um, and then also, I guess, hoping that we're not duplicating what they're hearing from other people to lessen the frustration for them. It's definitely a hard time. And although we're here to help, I'm sure there are some people who are like, we already got this from somebody else. Someone already referred us there. We've already tried and we didn't get any help. So clarification on those ends as well. Thank you. Um, I think one thing I'd like to add and lift up for people as we're thinking about that um, is how do we level that up a bit? Because I know um, on the last call as well as, um, thank you Alma for lifting this up, we're hearing a lot of folks who are beginning to circulate and compile those lists of resources. Um, and on the last call, or second to last call, uh, Judy from Bellevue School District lifted up that there's resources that are not being um, utilized because of fear or accessibility issues. 
Um, so as people are starting to think about um, dropping those resources in there, um, I wanna, does anybody have any thoughts or feedback on best practices or things that are working effectively to help get people connected to those resources that are being shared? Um, can I speak on behalf? Yep, I'm, uh, I've been at the different locations where the schools are putting out breakfast and lunch and asking questions of the families and saying, how did you hear about this? How do you know about this? And that bookmark that I made was for the families and a lot of them don't know that these services are out there. That being said, that's why I made as many bookmarks as I could to just literally put in the hands of people mm -hmm. and let them know what services are available. Um, I want to just speak to what Laura just talked about. Laura, you were talking about the geographic location of it's just overwhelming. And I saw a tweet from Barack Obama who said he called out Washington, D.C. They actually localized their geographical uh, spots and and look it in kind of a circle up and said okay who are the providers in this area who are the people that we know or need in this area can we get those people aware of what's happening it's it's an idea and I think at this point I'd like to see as many creative ideas as we can I also know that I spoke with a someone who said the people in Bellevue School District don't go to the school district website because it's overwhelming right now. So I said, well, how do they know where to get food? If you're a family in Bellevue School District, school's closed, how do you know where to get food? And so it's a question that I hope that we can think about of how to get to these, these places. Uh, thank you, Tammy. Um, I. I think I've been struggling with it a lot lately, uh, answering people's emails, trying to figure out, okay, I, I see the organization and I see the number and I'm gonna give this to you. So God help you because I don't know if this is the exact area that's going to help you, but zip code wise and area code wise, seems like this might be a good fit. Like for me, I'm, I'm new, I'm new to Washington. I've only been here four years, but I do know that 206 is mainly West side in Seattle. And so what I do with that is if someone says, oh, this is my zip code, this is my address, I'm like, okay, here's the list that I've compiled for you. And it's literally a bullet point list, strictly just the organization's name and their phone number and hoping that if I did give an extension, that was the correct one. If I don't know the extension, then I just give them the main line. Um, and, you know, we, at Bellevue Livestream, we, we try our best to group by area, even here locally in Bellevue, um, for people that we know live in a specific neighborhood and we know that a resource is close by, we'll try our best to get them as close as possible because we do have clients who are immobile. They don't have a car, they don't wanna take the bus right now, um, they definitely don't wanna do Uber, um, you know, and so, I have people who are like, well, do you know of any resources that deliver, especially right now? You know, d delivery is a, a big thing. Takeout is a big thing. And at this point in time, just like right now, I'm at a loss for words because I only know of so many. And, you know, some of these people at the same time are like, well, you know, thank you for referring me here. Thank you for referring me there. But I also don't have the finances to support that because with de delivery comes a cost, you know, um, most places now are offering zero delivery fees, which is great. Um, but aside from that, you still have to pay for whatever you're going to be getting. So then it becomes a point of, oh, well, I'm glad we have this resource of delivery, but I need assistance with buying the food. I need a gift card. And, you know, we, when our offices were open, we were able to help that. Um, and currently we're, we're just not. And, you know, I, I do, I, I really want to help as many people as I can, including myself, just to, um, you know, make sure that when people do reach out to us, and I'm sure to all of you as well, that we're directing them to the right place and we're not just dumping them in a ground where they're just like, now what? Thank you. We have a, a few more minutes here and I saw Helena raising her hand. Um, uh, 
I also I see quite a few folks raising their hand. We will have an opportunity um, if you've signed up to uh, continue this conversation, the breakout session. Um, we're encouraging folks to lift up challenges during large group and then start doing some solution making in those breakouts. So do know that we'll have time for that. Um, all my see you're unmuting as well. Um, before we transition, I'd love for folks um, just to provide a summary on kind of what are those overarching themes we want to keep in mind as we go into breakout sessions. Um, did you want to speak to that? I saw a couple people stuttering to unmute and I saw a couple hands raising, waving. No? Omar, are you talking? Oh, no, I'm not. I, I, I don't know who you're talking about. Okay, it, I'm just going to say that um, the group of promoters that we're working on um, the community, uh, we have um, a resources binder, and uh, that's a way to have all this information that we've been getting from different organizations. One of them, social media, everything what you're saying is helping us a lot, and we update our, our resources binder. Where we do, we've been working in the community for, for quite a while, so the the promotores was able to check those services, like you say, what is working, what is not working, and they give me uh, regular updates of what are, what are those services they are already there um, are functional or not, and that's the one that's one way that we use to spread the information on the community. We try to do as much as we can in their on their own language. And uh, we also um, was using it uh, last weeks when we were doing the phone call from the Bellevue School District to the Latino families to let them know the services that were available for them and the community. So that's just to mention some of the, thing, the efforts that we were Thank you, Alma. So kind of just to summarize what I'm hearing is that folks are gathering lists of resources. Uh, some recommendations are to organize those by area, whether that's zip code or city or regions or school districts. Um, I'm also hearing that updating and providing some qualitative information on those um, potential resources to let folks know, hey, someone, so-and-so went, it was safe, things went well. So when you're providing those resources to your contacts, you can let them know this is a safe space to go. Um, also um, reaching out, whether if you don't have that capacity, but partnering with other folks to make sure those resources are be being provided in multiple languages. Um, and then also making sure that when you're providing those resources, you're thinking about um, flyers or bookmarks um, and not just those virtual resources. Um, so uh, one other thing, that I want to lift up is that there have been a lot of phenomenal resources put into this chat box. They will be uh, added into our Google Drive after the meeting, so you'll have access to those. Um, hopefully you can use that to cross-reference the list of resources that you have. Um, I do encourage folks, if you see something on there and say, hey, there was an ICE incident there, or this is a, or on, you know, the inverse, this is actually a really safe place to go. I think it's really great to include that information and feedback so we can carry that on, um, hearing that that's an effective way to help get people connected to our tools and resources. Um, Helene, I see a question around how do we connect with volunteers? Um, I do need to switch this over, um, but uh, if someone has any resources as it relates to volunteer uh, body groups of volunteerism or folks who are will willing and ready to volunteer, I encourage you to private message Helena using that chat box function. Um, Vicki is now going to be virtually transferring us into our group chats. Um, if you are with me, we will be discussing uh, remote learning and childcare. Stephanie will be facilitating a conversation on financial health and well-being. Uh, Sandy will be helping facilitate a conversation on food. And if you're with Peyton, you'll be discussing housing concerns and vulnerable populations. So uh, we'll see you in breakout in just a few minutes. Sure, I put my, my email in my uh, name there so it's easy. <laughs> Okay, perfect. Thank you. Yeah, I'll look for the contact and get back to you. Thank you. Awesome. We got two folks from Kids Quest. <laughs> no coincidence. Do you have anything either of you ladies would like to share or speak to? Um, 
I'll let Jamie take it because this is her realm and I am here really to support her about what we can do. We were literally just texting each other, listening to the conversation. Oh, great. Thank you. Yeah. So um, that's the the questions of like remote learning and like child care that continue to come up. We're just really interested in what is still needed and what people are looking for support in um, because those are things that that we can do. And so I think we're just here to really learn like what is it that people are looking for? We've started our home quest, which is a digital platform um, that um, is on our YouTube page that does um, daily activities every single day, five days, the five days of the week that are gonna continue to roll out. We're hoping over the next um, four to six weeks if we have enough content. Um, and then those include story times twice a week. And then there are science, engineering, and art activities that are all connected with that. Um, so that's some of the work that we were able to do like quickly and right now. Um, but it, we are continuing to look like, are there resources that other people need in terms of like materials? Are there, um, is childcare still an issue? Because we keep getting multiple different feedback on that, um, that, that some centers are closing due to low enrollment. Um, um, I know the YMCA and Samina um, had reached out with our out-of-school time collab saying that they were taking first responders, children, and trying to, to work with that. So I think we're just here to learn more about what the need is so that we can continue to figure out how to support. And, and just to back up what Jamie's saying, the more that we know we're obviously in a position of trying to figure out who to keep on staff, who to lay off, what our staffing looks like. And if the community needs us in certain places, that's a justification for me to keep more of Jamie's team, yeah. um, which I know she would, she obviously would <laughs> like. And so it's a, um, that's just an easier justification for the greater good um, to our donors, to our board and to the staff as a whole. So the more we are, um, understand the needs and where we fit in. Um, it makes my sort of jigsaw puzzle of staffing um, a little easier. Yeah, I would offer um, something I'm sitting really heavily with and my role is um, working on changing the group composition of these calls so that we can get people who are impacted uh, to help provide some facts, right? We've got a lot of robust information on resources, um, but we're missing that factor analysis or that perspective of like, you know, no, that's not what's urgent for me right now. I really need this. Um, that did come up. We had some folks on the last call that were here to advocate like Alma representing populations that did lift up um, on the last call. Child, child care, as I mentioned, shifted very quickly from when schools were closed, all of a sudden it was a panic, but then when the service industry really took a dive, then it no longer became an issue for some very specific populations. Um, so I definitely think that's a question that um, we should continue to lift up in the large group. Um, and that I would encourage us all to think about how can we get in contact and have some real conversations with those folks so we can get some facts on who needs that support. Um, it's very clear that um, medical workers and things like that are still needing that child care support, but beyond that, the, this topic has kind of gotten pretty quiet with these changes. Um, what about uh, police and fire and other first responders? Have we had any contact with them? They haven't been on these calls, so I think that's another blind spot where if we had them on the calls, they might be able to say, yeah, we still need help. Um, so I, I can make note of that. Yeah. And I am happy to call Chief Milet. Um, yeah. And, I, excuse me, but the fire chief's name is escaping me. I do know him and have I only know my Redmond one. <laughs> um, and Jamie maybe have that contact either because he's done story time at the museum. Um, but I will, um, I will offer to reach out to those two agencies because that's a big group of people. Yeah, we'd love to have them on the calls because not only to figure out how we can support them, but also to get facts on what's happening because a lot of the themes have been for vulnerable populations who are now out of work um, and needing food and needing support for educating their children. And there's a lot of fear. Um, on the last call, someone mentioned um, that there were some ICE interactions, but again, it was kind of like rumor mill versus 
here's the, where it happened. This is the number of people. Like those kind of facts are big things that we're missing on these calls and we're working to get those voices. Um, other folks have anything that they want to share or we're hoping to get out of this time? Okay. Um, one thing I would uh, like to lift up is knowing that food sites are still open. Um, there has been, again, a lot of requests for learning opportunities and knowing that Lake Washington School District, I know my student, my children actually attend there, are not doing any sort of learning. Um, so we are left to our own devices to do that. Um, and I know I've seen a lot of content circulating um, organized by parents. There's a lot of Facebook groups of people needing to know what are um, learning opportunities online or, you know, activities that they can do. So I think being able to share those resources would be really helpful. Um, but I wonder what it might look like um, for you guys to partner with those food sites. So when, because those are the only times that parents are able to leave the house now, um, I wonder if there's some opportunity to like bridge the two or at least let people know at the same time, while you're here getting this information, food, maybe here's some information on um, education resources or remote learning, um, knowing that now we can't leave the house unless we're just going to get those essentials that might like, be what does that look like does it look like a link on their website does it look like a like a flyer at the food banks i would recommend some physical collateral um i think tammy was speaking to that bookmark just knowing that one because a person can hand it over they can also have a dialogue with them letting know this is safe um, because a lot of the re feedback we've been getting is when people are showing up to if they're showing up, they're very much like looking for ice um, and worried that these are not safe sites for them. Um, and again, that feedback on a lot of people don't have internet access, which is why Lake Washington School District, as well as Bellevue, chose not to do learning because it was inequitable and didn't meet the OSPI standards of holding school. So my recommendation would be some physical collateral to be shared. Um, and I think those food sites are a great option because that's the only time people can actually leave the house at this point. um trying to go over other feedback that we've gotten uh, yeah i think some other themes um i uh we were, we were talking earlier around um knowing the number of people that are being laid off what sort of opportunities um can come up for helping parents whether that's like parenting resources there's a lot of themes around not just like how to teach my kids but just like those family dynamics of now being home um and and how can we look at these this time as an opportunity versus you know panic so pretty intense i'd love to invite stephanie or tanya or nancy if you have any thoughts or things you were hoping to get out of this session Sure, I'll speak up. Um, you know, I think kind of adding on with, uh, you know, with what Jamie was saying, just looking at ways that, uh, so I'm from the Samina Club in Bellevue. Um, we do still have our childcare open. Um, you know, uh, numbers aren't, uh, aren't large, but there definitely is a need. We probably average uh, anywhere between seven and 12 kids uh, per day with just the first responders medical uh, medical professionals, essential, other essential uh, workplaces that we've been providing care for. So, um, you know, looking at ways that we can continue to support uh, in ways that we maybe haven't before, um, <clears throat> you know, not, you know, kind of being new to the East Side Pathways community. Um, you know, and if there are other things that we can do and, you know, as an organization, and clearly our, you know, our doors are closed right now for recreation, but um, you know, if there are other services that we can, you know, that we can provide, um, you know, I have board members that are offering to volunteer for food delivery for people in our community. Um, and so that's really why I'm trying to stay involved in the, in the conversation. So. Thank you. Um, yeah. I will, I can offer and speak to, um, Matt Gillingham from Lake Washington School District and Judy Buckmaster from Bellevue School District were on the call. Um, 
Uh, okay, I'm just seeing a chat from Nancy here. Um, we're on the call uh, last week and we're speaking to um, the current policies and practices around food distribution are really prohibiting their ability to distribute those foods. Specifically, um, the current practice was that a student had to pick them up so a parent couldn't. So for example, if the student was homesick and a parent went to pick up that food, they were not allowed to. Um, Judy was saying that they're just kind of doing what they need to do and ask for forgiveness later. Um, they also were having some challenges in um, getting that information out, knowing that a lot of parents don't have internet access. And so that's where um, partnering with organizations like NISO, who are able to get that information and then work directly. Um, there was some conversations about how volunteers can go pick up that food and deliver it to folks who feel like they're not safe or have mobility uh, challenges. But again, the policies around food distribution that um, the schools were being held to were causing some challenges. Information and add it. Huh? What was, what was that, Putter? Sorry, I got it answered. Oh, okay. Um, I granted that was what we heard last week, so I'm hoping some traction has been made. Um, we had some folks on the call who had some governmental uh, influence and took some action commitments to go and lobby and kind of push to get those things changed for them so that there was less restrictions. Um, they did make some traction and go from um, making all the food free so that no one would have to pay that pay for that food regardless of their income. So that's one change in modification that's been made that's made it more equitable. Um, and then uh, Hope Link was on as well last time speaking to the fact that um, they are not receiving donations at this time because COVID can live on surfaces of food, um, although they are still receiving uh, food and content from their regular channels. Um, so I think, again, one of the challenges is we need to get some more folks on these calls that can help answer those questions around resources that are being um, uh, that are here and available. So we're gonna be shoved back into our breakout session here in just a mo few moments. Can I ask someone who can provide a summary when we go back? Anybody willing? Christy nodded. <laughs> Who's willing to provide a summary when hey, we go back? I did it last time, guys. You did. <laughs> I did. <laughs> Eeny, meeny, miny, mo. Who's gonna give our summary? Colleen saying not it. Someone willing to provide a summary when we go back? <laughs> it's a stalemate. Okay, fine. I'll give our summary. <laughs> to be fair, I didn't ask at the beginning, so I'll provide a summary for us. Okay, well, um, I'll see you all back in the larger room in just a few moments. Thank you. I'm also going to ask if somebody would be willing to, as we have this discussion, summarize what we talk about so that when we go back into the large group uh, in 10 minutes, actually it's going to be 20 minutes, that we can summarize for everybody so that everybody in that large group can, sh can um, share in the learning. So is there someone who'd be willing to summarize for us? I need to check out in about two minutes, so unfortunately I can't volunteer to do that. Okay, thanks, Byron. Anybody else willing to? I, I can do it, Stephanie. Thanks, Sue, I appreciate it. Okay, what supports, when you think about kind of the financial issues that are happening, wage issues that are out there, what are some of the things that are needed right now that are top of mind? And what are some of the supports that might be available? Uh, this is Lynn Robinson. I, you know, I keep hearing from the small businesses in our community, and I know so many of our school families operate small businesses, and they're going to need something more than just a small business loan. So um, I would just I'd really like to encourage, and, and I'd like to get your input on this, but I'd really like to encourage our communities to buy gift cards from, from small businesses because that's a win-win. You can use the um, gift cards or you can gift them and then the small businesses get the money now. And actually, 
I was thinking about why don't we talk to some of our large employers like Microsoft and Amazon and see if they would be willing to do almost like a, a company city kind of thing where you give gift cards to your employees um, for local business, all the different restaurants and, and then the, the, the businesses get the money and, and the employees get the food. So okay. that was just a thought. For, they can use it when they go back to work, I guess. Thanks, Lynn. Other thoughts or additions on to what Lynn just added? What are you guys seeing in your own kind of spheres of relationship or spheres of influence that you have as it relates to some of the issues around financial assistance? and wages right now, in particular, especially with the shelter in place order. Hi, this is Judy and I see concern about how to meet mortgage payments, rent payments, um, how medical ins insurance will be affected for those who've lost jobs. Um, and at the federal level, we don't know what kind of package is going to come out, is, uh, will be available, but um, that, I think that's a big concern for people. At HopeLink, uh, the funds that we have available to help with rent assistance and emergency financial are right now, um, the same as we've had before, but we're expecting to receive a lot more demand for that. And so, yeah, there's just anxiety around what, what resources will be available to address the, the housing concerns. Mm -hmm. Thanks, Judy. I'll offer one of the things I heard uh, in our call last Thursday also, um, and this, I can't remember who brought this up, but the um, thought that though there is some relief being offered by um, housing institutions now of the, um, you know, not letting rent go for a couple of months, etc., it's so it's the issue is not so much now, but is in a few months as well. And for organizations, how are they trying to manage their cash flow and inflow of revenue so that in a few months they'll be able to respond to those needs when the other sectors are not able to um, provide that assistance? Are you is that a, a worry that HopeLink has as well? Um, probably so. I'm not in the housing part, but yes, we're, we're involved with those conversations. Um, one more thing that I want to mention uh, related to employment is that the state uh, employment security department, their website where people go to access information about unemployment insurance, all of that has been jammed up and people have not been able to um, easily access information on the website. I think it was crashing the other day and calling the phone numbers. People are, will try for hours and hours to get through on the phone and it's not working. So resources, uh, unemployment, related resources, the staffing is, seems to be really stretched. And so people who have lost jobs are trying to get information about what kind of benefits are available, but they can't get that information easily right now. Thanks, Judy. Is there anybody uh, on the line who has a thought about how you are shifting what you're doing or you're hearing about other stakeholders in the community who are shifting what they're doing in terms of helping get that information out. If people can't get the information from unemployment insurance, how are organizations stepping up and maybe providing some linkages to that information?
Hi, this is Judy again. Just real quickly, I'll respond to that. Um, we are providing an informational sheet to people, but the information is changing. And so what's most important is that people know how to access the current information. Mm -hmm. And we're trying, we're racing to try to stay current with the information as well. Mm -hmm. And we're all in the same position of how do we get it? Mm -hmm. um, but yes, we are trying to point people in the right direction. Mm -hmm. um, Lynn, not to put you on the spot, but I'm wondering, um, Lynn Robinson, if you might have some information on what the city might be doing in terms of helping make connections either through economic development, I know that's slightly different, but um, connections for those who might not be able to get information otherwise. Well, you know, I, um, when I was on this call today, um, one of the participants um, chatted that they wanted to make sure that their community was getting information as if their community was not getting information. And I think that's something we really have to look into as a city, how we're doing our re outreach. So uh, the city of Bellevue's website updates daily and there are links to all sorts of things and i encourage all of you to go on that website and see if you feel like we're getting enough information out there would love to get your feedback but in terms of alerting some of our communities who may not be used to looking at the city of bellevue's website we really need to make an effort to get people just to look there mm -hmm. off with yeah it's a good point i also wonder um Again, not, not that you necessarily have the answers on this, but um, maybe opportunities to connect in with the Bellevue neighborhood folks or the diversity folks. And it's not just the city of Bellevue, it's all of us, right, who have um, different organizations or departments within our own group that are making connections, how we're thinking about connecting differently. Well, I know we're all thinking about that. Um but I'm not the king, so I don't know yeah. the results thoughts, but I will carry your message because it's a very good one. Thank you. That's great, Lynn. That's the whole purpose on these, so thanks so much. I appreciate it. The opportunity for all of us to activate ourselves differently, which is then connecting back to our individuals who are part of our spheres of influence to include them in this. So I really appreciate you doing that. Well, and I appreciate the, the input, really. Um, I am curious about the whole idea of helping some of our small businesses, back to Lynn, what you were bringing out, and the idea of gift cards and thoughts around that. Um, wondering if anybody has any thoughts to add on to that or how we might be able to individually reach out to our own spheres of influence to help carry through with that. Thoughts, input? I, I, this is Sue. I was thinking one of the things is with gift cards that if people do, if companies do buy gift cards for their employees, if they buy them from companies or from restaurants, for example, that are doing takeout, they could be used right. I mean, yeah, they get the money right now, but the, then the, the people who get the gift cards would also get the food right now. So just, I mean, it's just, just a thought. Maybe there's also a way to to get those gift cards to people, I mean, to, to homeless people. Maybe that's, maybe that's a really good way to help the restaurants and the homeless. You know, uh, Sue, I'm gonna say, I feel like the agencies serving the homeless are doing a really good job. And Congregations for the Homeless just had this big drive yesterday where there was an Amazon site you could go to I, um, and just order things and have them delivered to the mm -hmm. agency. And somebody, Kevin Wallace, actually set up a staging area outside his office and gathered all these supplies and delivered them to congregations for the homeless yesterday. And I think there were a number of um, SUV loads of paper towels and toilet oh. paper and everything that they would need. So um, I think that. It's really best 
for the, the homeless organizations to take care of their people because they do have some people in quarantine and they are doing a really mm -hmm. good job of uh, keeping people safe. Well then, and well then, giving uh, giving the cars to whoever the people are who are looking for food. Let's put it that way. Maybe they aren't homeless, but maybe they've lost their jobs or whatever. Right. And probably Hope Link is um, familiar with a lot of who those people might be. Is that right, Judy? Yeah. Um, yes. Yes. And. Um um yes i have you were talking about taking gift cards to um to people who are without shelter there are a number of low income housing um, properties in our area too not just operated not just hope link transitional housing but imagine housing and and the, and the others and delivering those gift cards to um, those housing complexes for case managers to distribute would be another way that uh, a big employer, a big business like Microsoft, who wants to purchase those gift cards and get some money to the businesses, could also uh, be providing resources for low income individuals for when things come back online. I love that idea. And I would love to think that there is a central drop-off place that they could direct those gift cards that would serve all the different communities. <laughs> yeah, I think the, um, the, I know that the distribution has been a challenge for sure, especially now that we're even more in uh, lockdown with shelter in place. Being creative about sending them, or I, I, I don't know if people have thoughts about a, any news or updates on central distributions that seem to be working? Well, Kevin Wallace's office, that could be it. We just, no. <laughs> just a joke. Just there a joke. Go. I know he it. We need like a receptacle for gift cards that could be um, equitably distributed amongst our non our uh, nonprofits, and maybe there's a list of nonprofits that could effectively distribute gift cards, and maybe that's a place to start and see if anybody wants to be kind of a primary receptacle. You know, it's interesting because again, I think about Amazon here, and it's almost creating a mini marketplace of, you know, small businesses where people can go and. Um, buy those gift cards and because Amazon already has the infrastructure in place for sending those out. Oh, okay. So everybody could set up their own link yeah. on it. Yeah. I don't know if anybody has So any what you would do Go So ahead. what you would do is say for example buy 10, 25 or 50 dollar or whatever Amazon gift cards and then they could send them to whoever is designated as the as the uh, recipient, the recipient who would divide them equitably among people who do that. I mean, I, I don't know, I'm not in that business, so I don't know what the right wording is. But Judy, what do you think of that idea? Sorry. Um, and can you hear me? Yeah. Okay, yeah. it's saying I'm muted. Um, yeah, so the question is equitable distribution. Uh, yeah, and going through Amazon, is that what you're saying, Sue? Well, we're just, we're just throwing that out as one possibility. So in other yeah. words, if they were ordered, they would all be sent to one particular place. So maybe you'd end up with, uh, I don't know, five yeah. or $10,000 worth of gift cards. Yeah, yeah. Who can do those equitably? Right. Is that's. That, is um, that I. I think it's a challenge for the service providers right now to take yeah. on new tasks. Yeah, I'm just going to interject yeah. here really quickly to say we have about 15 seconds. Yeah. Uh, so we'll be. Okay. Let's summary. research this. Yeah. Everybody go to Amazon congregations for the homeless and see what their site looked like. Okay. Awesome, Lynn. Thank you. Thanks, you guys, Thank you. for participating. To be continued. 
I'm going to type in the chat box for those who are continuing to join. At this point, will is anybody willing to unmute themselves and start sharing? I have a little bit of information. Um, but first, let me introduce myself. I'm Christy Mintier. I'm an employee of the Bellevue School District, but my assignment is to support the Bellevue Schools Foundation. And I don't normally attend these meetings, but our executive director was in other meetings and asked me to sit in. But because I've been in on some meetings between Bellevue School District and the Bellevue Schools Foundation, um, I just have a little bit of information that may be of interest to you. One thing that's been explained to me, and I'm not an official spokesperson, so please forgive me if I don't get it exactly right. Excuse me, oh. Christy, can I just ask you to hold on for one second sure. before you share it? I missed uh, letting folks know that we will be reporting out. So is anybody willing to be a volunteer? to take notes and just present a summary from our breakout session to the larger group. You can show it to me by raise of hand. Is anybody willing? Christy, are you willing to take notes for us? Well, I don't know. My notes will be great, but I'm taking notes from my boss. So as long Excellent. as I'm doing it. <laughs> so we have a volunteer. Please go ahead, Christy, and share what you were going to share. Hey, I was just going to say that my understanding from some of the discussions with the Bellevue School District is um, in terms of getting nutrition services out to kids and feeding kids, part of the constraints they have have to do with the fact that nutrition services is a federal program and they have a lot of guidelines that they have to follow in order to serve kids within those guidelines and those guidelines are not really set up for schools not being in session. So that's been a problem and I know that they're trying to work on that. I've heard some things they're trying to do they're not ready to say publicly yet, but they're really working on figuring out a way to try to get food delivered to students rather than having it just be in these three schools where they are right now. Um, so that's part of why the Bellevue Schools Foundation, um, the luncheon was turned virtual and we've kind of shifted our funds and we've released $50,000 right now what was previously program funds to go into nutrition services for the next two weeks to kind of help with some of the nutrition things that can't be funded by federal programs. Mm -hmm. So that is in the works if that helps anybody feel any better. Um, obviously $50,000 lasting two weeks is kind of disappointing and so there's a lot more need and the foundation's working really hard on getting money to give to the district to help support that. But just so you know, there it is in the works that they're looking at ways to get food out to students. Thank you so much for sharing that. Uh, we did hear it in one of our calls um, two weeks uh, last week from Judy Buckmaster at Bellevue School District. Oh, I heard. Um, yes, and uh, there was a conversation. There was a great connection that was made between Microsoft, Amy Liu from Microsoft, and Judy Buckmaster, where it got. Judy Buckmaster kind of lifted up saying we do need corporates and their uh, support because this is a federal regulation where adults without, who, who are not coming to food sites without children are not able to pick up the food. Um, any other thoughts that are on top of mind? Any other gaps that have been lifted as we think about food services? Thanks for sharing and modeling. This. I do. I have something to say, uh, a question that I have is, um, what is the capability of Bellevue School District um, operating with the federally funded program of new services, opening up more sites in the Bellevue School District, um, uh, school district, as far as, you know, what about those school sites that are by crossroads in, and, um, on the west side and can we open up any more sites for the federally funded breakfast and lunch mm -hmm. and see if we can get that out there because i know that they're working on trying to get food to the kids but you know what are the constraints what would be the constraints as far as opening up those uh, additional with uh, additional hours that's my wondering 
Thanks for that, Tammy. Anybody has any ponderings to share on that? Yeah, I can pass on that information, but I would I would have no answers. But I can I can pass on the question. Just to um, bring what Matt Gillingham from Lake Washington School District had shared in one of the calls, he said there were food sites. There wasn't the food resources were available, but there were a lot of immigrant families, undocumented, who experienced fear and anxiety because they didn't feel safe coming to those food sites. So any thoughts on, uh, we just heard Helena speak about how there is a possibility that ICE will be asked to back off and not look at um, being present in these food sites. So that information can go to the communities, but any other deliberation on how this factor, which is impeding folks from getting to food sites, and using these resources. I'd request folks to unmute themselves so we can share. I don't have a total answer to that. I do know at, at Hope Link and a lot of other food pantries, we are not tracking any information at this time. And so people can be completely anonymous in coming to get food from any hopefully location. Yeah, thanks for sharing, Lynn. Um, is there a way, is there, are there any strategies that have been employed to get that information to the communities? No, no. Um, I'll, I'll take this back to our team to brainstorm ways so we can communicate that out. Thank you so much. And as a group, what do we think might be ways that we can let communities know? Yeah. I'd appreciate I, any guidance around that. Uh, I so spoke this, with someone. Oh, I'm sorry. Oh, it's okay. This is Jesse Franklin with Rainer Athletes. So we serve about 120 families uh, in the Bellevue School District who uh, are on free and reduced lunch and face other barriers to access. And so, we, you know, we're in a unique position where we have close contact with all 120 families. And so we're gathering this information. So you know, we, we're aware of public's uh, you know, policies and, and procedures. So we're able to pass the information off specifically to those families. If there, if there are other organizations that are, you know, in close contact with families that have the ability to kind of mass communicate, uh, you know, uh, Debbie Lacey with, with Eastside uh -huh. for All would be a really good, good uh, uh, place to start, uh, especially getting, get to families who uh, are part of an undocumented population. And... <laughs> Please and repeat then, where Debbie was from, what organization? Yeah, uh, Debbie is from, sorry, go ahead, Jesse. Eastside for All, Debbie Lacey. She was on call last, last week. Uh huh. So there's Debbie Lacey from Eastside for All and Alma Gonzalez from NISO, N-I-S-O. And both those organizations work with the Latino communities. Thank you so much for sharing, Jesse. Tammy, I heard you wanting to share something. Um, I did. <laughs> it's kind of like there's so much information that's coming in at the same time. Uh, again, um, oh, I heard from um, someone yesterday who said to me that the best way to contact people is through robocalls because they're not, a if they don't have access to a computer or internet and that's that's a challenge. So robocalls is one way. I was wondering if anyone knew about the whole six one one. There was there was this collection of agencies that was back in the day about ten years ago called six one one, I think, and you could call it and you would have a list of the different agencies that would help in whatever way they were, and it was separated. Uh, Lynn, do you know about that? Is that 211? 211. Uh, yeah. I'm sorry. I don't want to spread misinformation. <clears throat> yeah, that's um, great. But <clears throat> that is an excellent resource. And I think people are being urged right now to make sure that that's as update as possible. Yeah. It's commonly used. That 211 uh, robocalls is going to be really important. Also, it'd be great to get the concentration of where the most vulnerable mm -hmm. people are who are limited English as well as low income and go to them. Um, I wanna speak on behalf of Salvation Army. A lot of people didn't even know that they serve a nightly meal every night between six and seven o'clock at night. 
and they are um, at a very low percentage of what they are capable of doing. Mm -hmm. So I know that that's a for sure thing. The other thing that I heard from Zach Harvey, who is the center man manager over on 164th, is he said getting the word out there that these are available in whatever way we can is the most important. Second most important is Salvation Army will have a, uh, you'll start to see on Como that to give money to Salvation Army, all the money that's generated will go directly to the zip code from where it came from. Mm -hmm. So that's important information for people to know that it's going to so go much, right sure. to that. Yeah. Anything else that is coming up as a gap, which, yes, Jesse, please go on. I think you're on mute. Sorry, I lost the screen for a second. Tammy, <laughs> do you know if uh, Salvation Army is implementing similar policies to Hope Link where they're not collecting any information? Is it just show up and get food and is it a takeout or I'm assuming it's going to have to be takeout? It's, it's definitely boxed. Um, can you hear me? It's definitely a box takeout and it's definitely come up and you're served. There is absolutely no questioning at all. And it's directly next to Landmark Apartments, which is um, a very high needs area up all up and down 164th. Yeah, we're from Our, we're familiar with that yeah, area. Yeah, I, I know. I used to teach at Sherwood. So I know that Sherwood is a high needs school and I shout out to them. Let's see if we can get to those families in whatever way we can. Excellent. Thanks for sharing all these resources. So, so and thanks, Christine, well, well, for taking notes. Yes, one more, and maybe this has been talked about. And there's, again, I, I think there is an, definitely feels like there's overwhelming amount of information. And, you know, the more that we can kind of consolidate and keeping this information out in one pagers and bookmarks and those types of things, especially this group will be really helpful. Uh, I don't know if this has been mentioned yet, but the, Bellevue School District has a, you know, texting software mm -hmm. uh, and every school site has their family engagement specialists that have their list of those who have signed up for um, uh, break time meals. And so if there's a way to give, you know, get those one pagers in the link and then to, you know, specifically get that information to that texting thread, that could be super helpful. Uh, you know, I can connect with, you know, Melissa Slater, who's Who's leading the charge there? Someone I'm sure plenty of people in this group are connected with Judy and Melissa Slater, mm -hmm. uh, who might be able to get that that information out through their channels. Uh, the the challenge that I was talking about with Melissa, Melissa Slater is that you know now that there are so many families that are uh, losing hours, it's not just families who had signed up for a meal time break time mm -hmm. that are needing these services, and so. I mean, obviously, Bellevue School District has their, they could also send a text message to everybody in the in the school district that signed up for text messages, same way that they send out emergency snow closures and things like that. So there, there are those systems that exist. I think right now, again, it's this overwhelming amount of information. How do we consolidate that? And then have some sort of strategic plan to get that out every week or, or whatnot. Well, thank you for sharing about the texting service. I also know that the Bellevue School District has uh, brought MISO on board to make these calls to Latino families that are connected with them. Um, and that is happening actively. I think they do it twice or thrice a week. So sharing all of this information with them so the families know uh, where they can avail resources will be great. Um, anything else that's coming up for folks? I could uh, I could probably talk about food for about two hours on what's going on right now um, with the food system stuff and food services in general. Uh, specifically, though, um, I can speak on a few things right now how PCD is reacting to this uh, challenge that we're seeing and a huge disruption in our main supply chain. Um, some of this information I'm sharing with you guys is sensitive and critical to our business operations. So please um, please keep it within our group. Uh, but ultimately, we are seeing a reduction in our supply, our usual supply chain of up to 40% right now uh, from UNFI. Uh, we are looking at ways to tap into uh, the alternative supply chain, which is our local farmers. Um, right now, we are working on a proposal that is um, essentially contributing $80,000 to the local farmers 
uh, that in turn would be using that, uh, that money to buy food immediately from these farmers that have food right now and get that food distributed directly to the food banks across the region. Um, and we're work that proposal was just submitted yesterday. Uh, we're looking at approving that proposal today and that could go into activation as soon as this week. Um, there's just, that's our huge problem that PCC is facing right now is supply chain disruption and keeping the food system intact. Um, our farmers right now are all dealing with issues where uh, some of them are on the brink of collapse and some of them are headed towards the brink of collapse. So we're doing everything we can to support our local farmers as well. Um, more to come on that. It's an emerging issue. Every day is, uh, we're facing challenges in that regard. But our main focus right now is supply chain and supporting the emergency food. Our main focus right now is supply chain and supporting the Thank emergency Thank you so much for sharing, James. We will be back in the large room. Thank you so much for sharing, James. We will be back in the large room in seconds. Cool. Um, and thank you, Christy, for volunteering to summarize what we heard. We heard about supporting the supply chain, the BSD texting and the calling services to in ensure that communities know about the resources. The Salvation Army, Rainier Athletes and Hope Link, ensuring that the information and is shared with the community. Um, and you're ensuring that they feel that it's a safe space for the community to come in and avail those services. So thank you so much for sharing in this breakout session. We will be out in four seconds. We do have a full report out. We have a, um, a solid summary of what we have discussed, some of the solutions and, and all of those things. Um, would anyone volunteer to create that summary and report back? the large group. I can do that later. Okay. Thank you, Kathy. Um, all right. So again, I wanted to make sure that we have the, the time uh, to, to, to really dive into what we are talking about today. Um, and one of the, just kind of the first question I want to ask is, as we think about housing and how it overlaps with concerns for the vulnerable populations. What, are there any underlying assumptions that we have or that any of us have seen that need to change in order to um, allow this work to move forward? Because again, this is an extremely dynamic situation. Um, and like Kalika spoke about, there are a lot of dimensions of diversity that we want to be um, responsive to. Um, and this concern for vulnerable populations was actually brought up. Uh, through the Google Doc. So I wanted to see what, um, what if any underlying assumptions that we see uh, or experience and feel that we need to, that need to be changed. And then we can have the conversation going from there. But that's just what I'm going to start with and see if anyone has any thoughts about that. Maybe nothing about that. <laughs> that's okay so what so then my next question would be what do we think is what do we think is possible let's let's set our let's kind of set the universe when it comes to concerns about housing and especially concerns for, for vulnerable populations during this time what are possible solutions that we may be able to act upon and um, connect resources to Helena so I'm sorry, I was kind of distracted because I had just gotten an email saying that there's going to be new flyers available for the homeless population. So these are going to be um, uh, flyers for Congregation for the Homeless and Sophia Way entries. Uh, and that uh, I think Sophia Way has moved their location uh, from where they were originally to St. Luke's Church. So I was looking at that, um, trying to figure out um, how do we get flyers to people uh, so that they can post it. Uh, but the other thing about uh, the homeless population came up last week. Uh, I mean, last time we met last week was where are there hygiene centers for uh, people who are homeless? Mm -hmm. uh, because the hygiene centers that have normally been there 
uh, have been closed, are now okay. closed. And so that's one of the things that um, somehow if uh, Eastside Pathways can be a conduit to um, all of your agencies, partner agencies about getting that information out. So one of the things is, is that sometimes I feel like I'm in an abyss because I'm sending information out and I forget to say, send it out to everybody you know. Uh, mm -hmm. And so I'm making that assumption that people are sending things out to everybody they know. Um, and so it's, it should almost be common practice, and I probably should have said this in a larger meeting, I just didn't think of it. If you receive anything, send it out to your contact list. Uh, just send it out. Uh, if it's what I do, my information is usually coming from either a city source or public health or human services. And then I double check the link that I'm sending uh, before I add it to a list to see if it's a valid link, if it works, and if it makes sense. So around housing issues, we're certainly looking at that. Um, and uh, also I work to get more information about um, uh, what the city's role is. I know what the county's is about renting and people not being evicted during this time, whether it's commercial or residential. Uh, I think I, I do have coming out today, if I didn't send it, that utilities won't be shut off and all of the other um, additional utility services like CenturyLink, uh, T-Mobile. I didn't see Verizon on that list though. Um, uh, Comcast, not shutting off any utilities during this time. So I think that there's a lot of elements that'll help people at least not have to expend funds or worry about things around housing issues. So I will continue to bring that back and see what more information I can get. Thank you, Helena. And just to clarify, well, one thing I wanna make sure that that is a good reminder for uh, Eastside Pathways to make sure that we are continuing to let folks know to please spread the information that is verified uh, to their networks. Um, and just a clarifying question about utilities, um, you mentioned, is that, or do you know, is that city, county, or, or statewide, or do we have information on that yet? Um, I'm still checking on this city's utilities. Okay. Uh, uh, I know other cities have said um, we're not cutting anything off. PSE is not cutting anything off that I know for a fact, and most people get their heat uh, through PSE here. Um, so, uh, I will go back and take that question about utilities and, uh, and it's, they may have sent it to me and I just don't recall it at the moment. Uh, oh, and then the other thing Peyton I would say is that sometimes we send people information and, uh, we upload it on our website. I mean, agencies upload it on their website, but then they don't send a new alert out to folks saying that there's new information out there. So uh, that's a kind of a, a miss too. Okay. That, and that's I'll check on the utility stuff. Thank, Thank you. Thank you. Excellent. That is wonderful. Did anyone else have anything to add about, around what they feel is possible or further questions? Since uh, you know Helena has a a great wealth of information. Um, Hello, I Hello. don't have, um, I have a lot of questions actually. Uh, so Carlos and I have been trying our hardest to, you know, research and um, go to the government website and read all about, um, you know, the moratorium and whatnot. But does anybody know after the eviction ban is lifted, um, what's going to happen? Are landlords going to just hand off to people this very long notice that says, hey, you know, eviction is lifted. This was last month. This is this month. These are all of the late fees you're accruing. Now you have this many days to pay it um, because that it's just not going to happen. <laughs> um, you know, for, for the time being that people are not allowed to work, um, no income. So their bills are just racking up. And 
when all is said and done, I know that this was supposed to be or is supposed to be a nice little break for people who, you know, are not able to work. But for those of for those organizations, including ours, that are going to be giving this assistance, this type of rent assistance, who continue to give it even till now, um, what should we prepare for? What should we be telling them? I, I have someone this morning who asked me, oh, you know, I was able to pay March, but I'm anticipating April. But what can you tell me about this ban? And should I even be preparing for April at all? And that kind of puts us as an organization at a standstill as well, because we want to make sure that whatever money we allocate to different programs, especially to this right now, um, that we're more than covered and we're more than able to help those that do come to us and we're not giving them misinformation. And I like what you said, Helena, about, you know, if you receive any information, do not assume that everybody got it, you know, forwarded it out to everyone possible. So everyone's on the same page and I'm more than happy to do that as well. But you know, for Alma, you know, who was saying there are people who don't have the technology to help them do that. You know, some people are literally running off of their iPhone right now or their smartphone. You know, there are people who um, are struggling to figure out, well, you know, we used to be able to have these appointments in person and bring physical documents. Now we're having to scan them or take photos of them and then upload them. And some people can't do it. You know, they, they just, they don't know how. And at that point, it's, shoot, now we're telling you we can't help you because that usual face-to-face -face contact that we could have, we don't have now. And because we don't have that, we're not able to continue the process that we normally would to be able to get you that assistance. Um, and then once it stops there, now where do we refer them to? Um, so as you just heard, there was a bunch of questions there. <laughs> and, um, and, and it's, I think for me, it's very, um, it's hard to swallow because I would love to be able to tell everyone yes, just yes and here, like here it is, you're good, you don't have to worry anymore, um, but we can't. So what what is the best way to help these people without saying at the same time, I can't right now? I don't know that I can answer that question, but I have listed all your questions that you've given me and, and also if you would send me your questions, there is a task force. So out of the community, the King County-wide, this is being hosted by Public Health, there's a King County-wide community partners meeting uh, that I was on yesterday. That's the one with the 188 agencies that were on it. They have task force. I believe one of their task force is housing. And I will uh, kind of work through to see if I can get to the ta housing task force to submit your questions uh, so that they can at least begin to say, yeah, and these are some of the other things that they suggest. So if you send me all of those questions so I don't miss anything, I will work to get that information to that housing task force to see if we can get any kind of response. I think they're excellent questions. I don't have the answers right now. No, that's, that's okay. I, these are just questions that are always lingering in our minds as, you know, we get all of these emails filtered through asking us for assistance that we're not even sure what's happening um, with it. And we don't want to give misinformation. We don't want to turn people away. We want to make sure that if there is an available immediate resource um, that we have that. So we're giving it to them and we're not just, like I said earlier, giving them things they've already tried. Um, and even though that might be the case, maybe they have tried everything and now it's just a waiting game, um, it still would be nice to continue conversation and make sure that if something does come up, immediately we can tell them that, hey, this is new, here you go, let's see how far it can take you. Thank you. That's, that's really helpful. I want to make sure that we see if there was anyone else. I know we have Alma and Carlos and Teresa and Shayla and Kathy and, and wonder if you all had wanted to... Um, add anything about either dimensions of diversity or vulnerable populations that we have not talked about that uh, you wanted to raise up um, or resources or questions. Alma. You're still, oh, there you go. Okay. This is totally new. You see that's that's one of the was one of the examples that I tell you. Many people we are not in a conversation or this kind of way of communicating. 
Um, we can't we can't hear you that well. Could you move a little closer to the mic? I think yeah. I just it, it cuts can in and out. Can you hear me now better? Yes, thank you. Okay, okay. so <laughs> that's why I tell that. Um, one of the things that I was I was talking to to the team and to the people that we uh, that we are rich is is about the um, the fear on the on the on some part of the community. I talk about the community that we work with. Um, in in accessing this this uh, extra help from the from the government to don't pay the mortgage or the rent or the bills, um, we not not sure and we're not clear if it's, this is just applied for somebody who can um, uh, can access it to, to I mean can have a legal status or not mm. because um, because it's been so many things, uh, so much information out there that it's going to be an extra help for people who it's a low income or things like that. But we don't know if that that include um, uh, people with not not status because, uh, like we, we were talking about before, you know, some people can go to get an employment, can get a, can get an extra help. Not are uh, not this this um, this um, part of the population. Mm -hmm. they can I, they can I get an employment so uh, echo a little bit with what I was saying um, how they will how the how did they gonna pay for the lay fees for the um, for the extra uh, water bills or electricity or whatever phone companies but if they don't they wasn't able to generate any income during this time because this is I we call us we call a little bit of this area and all that forgetting a little bit because that's the one they don't get any uh, of this extra government help because mm -hmm. of status. So uh, anybody have any ideas of how did this can this work for for this part of the community? I, I'm not sure if. I phrase it on my question well. <laughs> like, you know, the, do you have any idea how did this work for the community? Um, and did they have did they did they have to have their the status or or not or how did it work? And I'm just going to jump in, um, Alma. Um, and additionally, I see this huge need for um, uh, basically what NISO programs um, are doing. Um, in order to communicate all this information, specifically they're working with the Latino population. And um, I'll just put it out there, they need funding to continue to do this because the NISO promotoras are paid a, a, a fairly small, small stipend per hour to do this outreach. And I'm just wondering where we could find some funding for them to continue to provide information to the families and then also bring back information from families about what their needs are. And I see we're mm -hmm. about to go back to the breakout. That is good. Yeah, we are about to go back. Um, Carlos or Helena? Uh, Carlos can go first. He's He's been waiting longer. Uh, but just check with me. I have some information about uh, funding that uh, East King County agencies are doing, Kathy and Alma. Carlos, you got about 30 seconds. <laughs> I'll try to make it really quick. Um, it's more of an immediate question in terms of this next coming month for rent assistance. Um, normally we ask for the 14 day notices that apartments hand out so that folks can apply with us, but mm -hmm. we're worried that because of the, the regulations put on by the governor that, that those won't be available. So we're wondering what alternative documents other organizations are thinking of using in order to, um, to let folks apply for their um, rental assistance if um, they are continuing for for the next month. Thank you for for raising that. Um, and I, we probably won't be able to get to that here, but I know that we... Oh. Uh, hello, everyone. Welcome back. Uh, you made it back safely. I hope you were able to have some really robust conversations. Um, before we close things out, I'm going to ask for each of our groups to provide just a quick summary, some key takeaways from your breakout sessions. Um, let's start with Peyton's room. Someone from Peyton's room want to uh, share their summary? Yeah, uh, this is Kathy. Um, so our was vulnerable populations. Um, 
Uh, let's see, Helena shared that there's a new flyer for homeless uh, populations that she'll be sharing out um, with all the resources um, that that population are, um, uh, need. Um, we also lifted up the issue that how do we make sure that all these flyers that are being shared out are shared out broadly? And the recommendation was just quickly verify that all the links on the flyer work before you send it and then just keep on sending it out to everyone. Um, it also was a question as how do we know which flyers are new? Um, City uh, Bellevue through Helena communicated um, about that utilities will not be shut off. There'll be no evictions. Helena is trying to compile a kind of a more comprehensive list of, of which util utilities won't be so shut off so that families will know. Um, there was a big concern about after this crisis is over, will families be experiencing that they now have all these bills for past due payments due? Will there be late fees? We also lifted up that there's a technology burden for vulnerable populations if they have to submit forms electronically. Um, and Helena is in communication with, with the King County Task Force on various subjects like housing. She'll lift all these questions up to them. And then the final thing we talked about was how um, can we support organizations that are working with different communities, maybe specifically communities with different languages, in order to get that um, information out to them. Thank you, Kathy. Uh, someone from Sandy's breakout session? It's set. Sorry, I don't know which group is which person. Uh, if you were with Sandy, you were discussing food, I believe. Okay. Um, Sandy said that she had heard from Judy Muckmaster that the Bellevue School District is looking to work with Microsoft to distribute food to students. Um, some of the concerns that people had um, and Lynn Robinson said that it's important to people know that HopeLink is not tracking people. And Tammy Waddell said the same thing for um, Salvation Army so that people can feel safe to come in, the food's available to go and they, anybody can need it. Um, Jesse Franklin said that one thing they're seeing is that there are more people um, than just the kids that were on the mealtime break time that are now needing food because so many people have lost their employment. Um, apparently, NISO is um, helping the school district with um, translating into Spanish. And Tammy wondered if there was still a nine, or excuse me, a 211 number to call for resources. And apparently, that 211 number is good. So then there were concerns about how do we get this information out to families. Um, there were suggestions that perhaps robocalls would be a good way to get things out, particularly people who need to be in targeted languages. If we had phone numbers, information could be targeted in their language. And then um, Jesse's, I think it's Jesse or James said that they'd been talking to the Bellevue School District about um, tapping into some of their texting capabilities in order to get information out in general. Um, and I think that's the main stuff. Thank you. Okay, someone from uh, Stephanie's group on financials. Okay, this is Sue. Um, we spoke, uh, Judy uh, with HopeLink talked about the concern of people about paying their mortgages, the future costs and the general anxiety of not really understanding what the government uh, is doing and HopeLink is, is expecting more demand uh, more demand as this thing goes on and on and there's going to be a lot more need for, for financial help. Uh, let's see, there was also a concern that the state links on unemployment are completely jammed up and crashing and resources for unemployment is really stretched. People can't get information they need. There was a question about our organizations providing information, but the information, the organ, the state is providing information and other organizations are providing information, but it's changing so fast, it's hard to keep up and hard to keep accurate. The fact that the city, uh, the city website is updated daily and so that if people go to that website, it should be, it should be accurate. 
Um, let's see. Yeah, one of the things that Lynn brought up was that the congregation for the homeless did a drive with uh, asking people for contributions and it went through Amazon and all those goods were delivered and then are going to be distributed to the homeless. And I thought that was really pretty innovative. She also uh, suggested buying gift cards uh, to provide resources for low-income people. The question is, who collects those and how are they equitably distributed? And that'll be an issue that we'll need to look into because uh, service providers are absolutely stretched right now. So that's something to pursue. Okay, End thank, of report. You. <laughs> thank you, Sue. We had a stalemate in my group. So <laughs> I'm going to provide a summary. Um, I think the overarching theme that I heard, and please do chime in uh, if you were my breakout session, was just an abundance of resources and folks ready and willing to um, allocate and reorganize things, uh, staffing and resources, transitioning things to vit virtual, um, but really just wanting to make sure we have uh, really clear data on where those needs and clogs are. Um, giving the example that prior to this um, stay in place transition that uh, child care was an issue and now it's not and so really just want to make sure um, as organizations are making business decisions on who to keep on staff where to reallocate those resources that we're um, using data to drive those decisions um, also lifting up that there are child care sites still being um, still open and running like Samina for example that are providing support for first responders um, ultimately I think our group was really wanting to see some more uh, perspectives on this call, having people from that first responder uh, sector on the call to help provide some facts and data, um, as well as parents and folks like that to really give us that real-time data so we know um, and can make some data-driven decisions. Um, I think some overarching themes before I pass it to Stephanie to close up here, really folks is, uh, reach out to people, have some conversations so we can continue to get real real time data on where we can work together. We're so fortunate in this community to have an abundance of resources um, and trying to keep up to date with what that sense of urgency is and where to apply those resources is a huge challenge. Um, as we've heard throughout this call, there's a lot of resources, people working uh, tirelessly to capture those resources. Um, and then I also encourage you to really also level that up and think about those multiple dimensions of diversity, thinking about homeless populations, um, thinking about translation services, thinking about um, equity as it relates to technology and accessibility. Um, and lastly, I'd really encourage people to think about how do you partner with other organizations. So thinking about knowing that people have limited opportunities to leave the house now, how can we bundle those resources so that when people are leaving the home, um, they're getting access to as many resources as that we possibly can. Um, so thank you all. I'm going to pass it back to Stephanie, and we'll see you back on Thursday. Thanks, Kalika. I appreciate it. Um, hey, one other thing before I close up here. I had a text from Judy Buckmaster that I wanted to offer. She was not able to make the call because she was on other calls. But for Bellevue School District, food services are expanding by bus delivery to 35 sites around the community all quadrants later this week, latest by Monday, lunch and breakfast will be delivered. And I know uh, for Lake Washington School District, they are um, doing orders, pre-orders for, for anybody who needs it for breakfast and lunch, and that is available on their website as well. So I wanted to get that out there. So um, in conclusion, just again, wanted to thank everybody for joining, being able to connect briefly Together is really, really important. I know it's time consuming, but um, hopefully it is the opportunity for us to be more efficient and um, creating those connections so that we can ultimately get to those services and support to the community faster. Um, did want to mention that we'll be sending out this information, the summary of the notes, the recording of this uh, video virtual chat, as well as the breakout discussions will be coming by end of day today. They will always be available on the Eastside Pathways website, as well as we have links to other, some of the other main connector points, like the city of Bellevue that then has a cascade of other connector points as well for supports and services. So our next meeting, 
virtual meeting is Thursdays. We're doing these on Tuesdays and Thursdays at 10 a.m. We uh, will be having either Thursday or potentially next Tuesday some folks from King County providing updates on just the uh, COVID-19 responses as well. So stay tuned for that. In conclusion, we'd love to hear from two or three folks just popcorn style, unmute yourself on uh, a one word checkout if you can offer that before we say goodbye. Appreciating community. Love it, thank you. Couple more. Six. Wanting to be involved. Thanks, Sue. I'd say steady. Steady. Thanks, Jesse. One more. Close us out. Take care of yourself and don't forget to give yourself a hug when you can't hug other people. <laughs> <laughs> Perfect way to close it out, Helena. Thanks, everybody. Stay well, and we'll connect definitely again on Thursday. Bye-bye.